It is Wednesday night. Once again, you have tuned into the Metal Summit right here on Facebook Live with your, as always, beautiful, wonderful hosts here on what we love to call our Island of Misfit Toys. We've got Jason. We've got Psycho Steve. We've got Angel Alamo. I'm Jay. As always, we love having you guys here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your lives, your schedules, and, you know, taking some time out from being children of the corn to being with us tonight. But the fact of the matter is it's less about us. It's all about you, but it's all about our guests. So let's bring him in. We've got from Striper, Mr. Perry Richardson. How are you, sir? Hey, what's up, y'all? Good, man. Good. Thanks We're doing for, great. For Honored to be here, man. No, thank you so much for taking the time, man. We're definitely super excited because the fact of the matter is immediate congratulations are in order because even the devil believes. Congratulations, man. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this coming out, man. It's uh, my first recording, my first time recording with Striper. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to, I think it's the best thing we've done yet. I really do. It's so good. I mean, it, I can't quit listening to it myself, so it's, you know, it's great. I can't wait for the people to hear it all. Absolutely, for sure. So you were fresh into Striper when the last album came out, but you weren't a recording um, member of that rec um, for when that album was put together. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about coming into Striper with that super fresh material. Do you look at that material differently than this coming up album? Because I figure you probably have to because you were much, you were fully involved now. Yeah, yeah. I, think I look at it a lot differently. I mean, that was, uh, they were, they had already start, started recording that record right when I came in. And uh, when I went up to uh, audition, they had already started recording it. So, and I was playing with this country guy in Nashville, Craig Morgan, and uh, I had to give him a notice, you know, I couldn't just quit him and leave him hanging. So I stayed with him another three weeks or so. And uh, before I started with this guy, so they didn't have time for me to redo the bass tracks and all that, it would have been a little too much. So, um, this one's totally different because I had, I was involved in, the whole project, you know, you're from, we'd go in and, you know, arrange the songs and Michael pretty much had everything written. And, uh, we got like a, he'd send us little snippets of, uh, like a drum machine and the guitar track. And that was all we'd hear, you know? So we'd like work from that and we got together and rehearsed and rehearsed and put it all together. And it, uh, it came out amazing. So. Absolutely, for sure. And then a final thing for me before I start kicking it over to the guys, talk a little bit about just like auditioning and your interest in Striper. Did you have like a lot of history with the guys and you knew, you know, you knew that you liked them and everything? So just talk a little bit about what it was about the band that was interesting to you. Yeah, I, I love them. Back in the 80s, man, they were one of my favorite bands. Uh, I got to open for them in 85 and... CJ and I from Firehouse, CJ and I were in a band called Max Warrior. It was before Firehouse. It was, uh, and we got to perform in Charlotte. And that was the first time I'd met them. And they were great guys, had a good time. And uh, I met them, I think, twice after that until I joined the band. So we really didn't have a history at all. They, they knew who I was, but they didn't. I wasn't on the radar, you know, about being in the band. They had no idea. Uh, a friend of mine was talking to one of their managers one day. He told him that they might be looking for a bass player, and he gave him my number. And the guy, and Dave Rose, he was in Nashville, so he just called me up, and I was in Nashville. And I ran down to his office, and we had a little meeting. And and Dave, it's weird. Dave was in a band. In North Carolina, that it opened for like one of the first shows Firehouse ever did. So he he knew me and he kind of pushed them and the you know like oh, this dude's great. You need to try him out, right? So I uh, okay, they called and said, yeah, we'll we'll give him a shot. And uh, they gave me like four or five songs to learn. And I flew up and we went to Michael's house and this little tiny room with little lamps and sounded like crap electric drums it was 
It's terrible, right? <laughs> we were just playing the songs and no singing or anything, just playing music. And, and then we said, oh, after we did that, played a few songs on you. I said, oh, let's just sing. And we just started singing the choruses a cappella, you know. And they were like, okay, cool, man, that sounded great. And we'll let you know. So they <laughs> said, great. So they, they actually called me like the next day and uh, told me it was mine if I wanted it. They didn't even bother inter in interviewing anybody else or anything. So it was good. It was cool. Dude, that's awesome, man, for sure. Let's kick it up to our good friend, that man with the killer smile, Psycho Steve. I believe you're up. Okay. Well, thanks again for joining us and putting yeah. up with me. Uh, the question is, out of all the Striper catalog, including the new album, do you have a favorite song? Uh, that's a hard one. Uh, I think it would have to be Do It To Others off the new record. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, picking an old song, I'd have to go with Soldiers Under Command. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. right on. Steve, you want to keep rolling with it, brother? Absolutely. Okay, so I have another question. Uh, if Firehouse and Striper ever did a tour together, would you ever consider jumping on stage and doing a song? Because I know you have. Oh, yeah. One -off yeah. And stuff like that. Would you, like, come and do a song with them and then just finish up your set with uh, yeah, player. of course I do that. I, you know, I still love those guys. We're still friends, and we got to hang out on the last Monsters of Rock cruise, and uh, they were on there. So CJ and I went and saw two or three bands together, and Mike hung out with Michael a lot, and Bill. Yeah, they're all cool guys, man. I still love them, and uh, yeah, I get up and jam if they want me to. Sweet. <laughs> right on. Absolutely. Jason, how about yourself there, my man? Let's hear from you. Hey, Perry. So um, uh, since you've been with Striper, um, what is what, what was your favorite uh, experience performing with them? Uh, and where wh where was your favorite performance uh, with them performing as Striper? Oh. Hmm. Well, the very first show we did was the M3 Festival. That was a, that was great. Um, I mean, it's hard to pick one. I mean, it, the, there's been some great crowds and uh, Gas Monkey in, Dallas, in, in Texas, that's a, that was a great show. Puerto Rico stands out as an awesome place to play. And the people there were great. Um, we did a show in Spain. We did a show in Spain and, and Italy. That was the first time I'd been to either one of those countries. And, and the festival we did there was just enormous. So it was like a, we were on stage with all of my idols that I grew up listening to. Judas Priest, Uriah Heep, Scorpions, Dio, Kiss. Like, I'm not Dio. Uh, who was it? Uh, I forgot. I forget everybody that was on the show. Uh, Dio uh, Disciples? Except. Awesome. Except was on there. Man, that was freaking huge. It was great. It was like 50,000 people there. But, uh, that was an awesome show. But I can't pick one, man. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's some of the top ones, I guess. Right on, right on. Plus, you had your rainy little Baltimore show that we talked about, too. Man, I, hey, I remember that, though. That's, it's hard to just remember a show off the top of your head. Absolutely. But, you know, it's hard to forget the name of that club. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely no. For sure. yeah, Fish, yeah, Fish Head Cantina has its history of kooky little shows, for sure. Yeah, it was fun. A yeah. Angel, how are the uh, how's the uh, black and yellow um, you know nation and the metal summoners doing? Well, fans are definitely very excited about the new album. Thank you, Star Peters, Matt Porter, uh, 
Jill Edwards, thank you all for for listening in. Uh, my question is on the new album. You co-wrote a, a couple of songs. Um, how was it writing with the band for for the new album? It was great, man. You know, I mean, it's a dream come true for me. I mean, I'm you know I was uh, I didn't have any idea that that you know that I'd get to play with these guys in my life. So I'm so psyched to be here, and uh, they're so freaking talented. I mean. So good. I mean, being up there on stage, looking over and seeing those three guys, I'm like, it's like a dream, kind of, you know. <laughs> but, um, but the writing thing was great. I mean, we went in and, and uh, arranged all these songs and put in a few, you know, lyrics here and there, and that was it. But uh, come up with a couple of titles on those those two songs, and it was uh, just a great experience, man. We had such a fun time in the studio which that's unusual too you know and we got a couple of questions from the fans uh, this cool. question is this question is from brian um did robert ever tell you about being in a rod stewart tribute band <laughs> my buddy Ray was the basis in, in that no event. no i never heard of that <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to get on him about that one i love that <laughs> Rod Stewart. I almost played in a Rod Stewart cover band one time. I rehearsed with them a few times and it never panned out. But yeah, that was a long time ago. And this one is from, from Rich. Hey, Perry, what is the biggest difference between playing in Firehouse and now in Striper? Hmm. I think the, the fans are more hardcore for Striper, man. It's like I've never seen such diehard fans that they'll travel and go to show after show after show, and they're really dedicated, stand behind this band, and that's one of the main differences, I think. I mean, you know, the the music's similar in a way, and I'm still singing the freaking high harmonies, trying to sing above Michael's really hard, but. Uh, both of those guys, him and CJ, sing in the stratosphere, so I'm kind of used to that. But it's a lot of the same kind of thing on stage live, but it's just the surroundings are different and the message is different, which I love that. Um, and the biggest thing is the fans, man, they're just so incredible. Absolutely, man, for sure. One of the things that I definitely wanted to to talk to you about is because I'm just a, I'm just a big nerd for gear, man. So it wasn't going to take me very long to bring up like basses in particular, and especially your guitar and stuff like that. So you know, just talk a, a little bit about like what you play and why you're using the company um, that you're using because I I I loved the I love the flashy design. I mean, of course, it's very striper esque, but yep. it's definitely a unique design that you chose uh, to put on there. Yeah, I um, I went back and. Uh, the very first company that I was ever endorsed with is a company in North Carolina called Roscoe uh, Bases. Um, I can't say enough good things about these guys, man. That's one of the best sounding guitars I've ever had. Uh, the black one, especially. I got the, a yellow one, too. The P bass design with the black one is just, we plugged it into the studio and the hit the first note, we didn't even tweak it. He, the engineer turned around and looked at it and said, what is that? <laughs> All right. So it's like, it's a Roscoe, man. It's so, it's so bad. But uh, when I record, I took my pedal board that I have on stage. It has an Ampeg DI thing on there. Uh, I used a uh, Mark Bass synth pedal with a few different little rally things that are in there that uh, you'll hear when the rest of the record comes out. Um, EQ, compressor, I mean, just basic stuff. And uh, now live, I uh, used two, uh, I got two PV stacks, two 810 PVs, but uh, one of the micro mini heads, I think. But uh, they've been great to me, you know, they sound Sound awesome, sounds just like an Ampeg, you know, it's that same kind of thing going on. Um, 
that's it. I don't use a whole lot of a whole lot of effects or anything. So yeah, because one of the things I thought was kind of cool because it's actually kind of the way I like my guitars as well is you 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 really have minimal like you know bells and whistles whistles on it you know minimal minimal knobs and stuff like that. Are you just kind of a less is more kind of guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that when I'm playing style too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's uh, not real flashy, man. I'll just lay down the groove, you know, I'm locked in with a kick drum and let it go. But uh, yeah, I've never been a real, you know, real flashy guy when it comes to that or my sound. I like a particular sound and I like for it to cut through, not real muffled. I like a little, you know, that brightness that comes through in the mix. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm going for. Absolutely, man. Sometimes full and solid and basic is just the way to go for yeah. sure. Yeah. Psycho Steve, take it away, my good dude. So, of course, besides Striper, is there any bands today that you listen to? Like a go to band? Like a favorite band? Boy. Man, I listen to a lot of old stuff all the time. You okay. know? Uh, What's new that I bought? Like, I bought the new Angel album. Have you heard that? Yes. So freaking cool, dude. I was a huge Angel fan back in the day, man. I love them. And uh, that record's great. I love it. Um, I hadn't gotten anything new, man. I'm listening to old stuff like Sweet, Queen, and Old Priest, and Uriah Heap, stuff like that. Sweet. No problem. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Right on. Jason, you're up, my man. So, um, what was uh, the band or um, album that made you want to get into music and, uh, and play uh, the bass or um, any of anything related to music? And, uh, and then also, um, or did you ever get a chance to um, meet or play with that uh, band or person? <laughs> well, actually, the the person that influenced me the most on bass was my dad. And uh, yeah, I did play in a band with him. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been influenced by bass players. That's another weird thing. People ask me, who's your influence? I I don't really have any. I mean, the dude from Uriah Heat was great. I loved the way he played and got from Boston. But, you know, I'm, it, it was always singers that attracted me to a certain band. Because I was always, when I first started, I mean, I, I was saying, the first time I was got into music, I was seven or eight years old. I was traveling around singing in a gospel quartet when I was a little kid. So, and my dad, you know, was in that, and we got all in the music that way. So, um, the first rock thing that got, that caught my ear was like Creedence Clearwater Revival and, uh, the Black Oak Arkansas back in, you know, in the early seventies. That really, I think the first, I mean, let me take that back. The first record, the very first record that uh, that wasn't country or gospel that I was influenced by was Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, my uncle had one, and it was in a work truck on the farm. I was riding around on the truck and put the eight track in, man, and it was Sly, and it blew my mind. So I was like, God. So I started. That's what first got me into rock was that, and uh, so I just went crazy from there and I was I mean I was probably 14 years old by the time I really started getting into rock so I'm curious Sly and the Family Stone what's your favorite song God uh let's see Higher maybe say that again Higher okay I want to take you higher or uh or I don't know, everyday people. I have some great stuff and all this stuff's so good. Yeah. yeah. I kinda like um Family Affair myself. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry Green was bad, dude. He's a good bass player. So that's one guy, I guess, I could. I, God, I can't name his, him as an influence. I played nothing like that, but he was great, yeah. Absolutely, man, for sure. Angel, how's the yellow and black attack doing, buddy? Oh, they're doing also. Uh, Star Peters has a question. She asks, how has your experience been with the fans as far as them welcoming you into the band? They 100% welcomed me with open arms, man. And that's when I first joined, they were like, they kind of like, uh, and you might get a little pushback. We're not sure because they're diehard fans and we don't know how this is going to go. And never had one person, everybody come up to me and threw their arms around me and like, man, we're so glad to have you here. Welcome to the family. That was the number one thing everybody said to me. It's like they consider themselves a big family and that's so cool to me. And uh, so every meet and greet we do, it's just, it, it's like that, dude. It's so, they're so welcoming. And uh, I don't think it'd be like that with any other band, to tell you the truth. Uh, my my question is: Do you use the same bass in the studio as you do on the road, or do you use different basses when you go in the studio compared to the road? Yeah, same same one I play, same one on the that I used on the studio is the one I use on the road. And I only got two of these Roscos, so it's either one of the two. The black one sounds a little bit better, I think, for me. So I play it most of the time, probably seventy five percent of the time. <clears throat> nice I'm right on man uh, you had mentioned you had mentioned uh sweet and i i thought and i kind of bring that up as you know a band that you got into when you were younger and i've always you know liked sweet too um and so i just kind of you know wanted to ask you about the uh the uh the recent passing of uh stephen priest and did you ever get the opportunity to meet him in your career no nope. never met any of those guys gotcha. i would have loved to but uh yeah, it was sad. Uh, they were, I just think they were so far ahead of their time. I mean, God, they did some great stuff. And uh, I, those vocals, those harmonies are amazing, dude. Yeah. So that super high one, it sounds like a mouse screech, screaming in the background. So I love that. So, Oh, absolutely. Great it's, stuff. And it's crazy, too, because you get into like, you know, the the songs that they put out and even, you know, songs of theirs that have become like almost like legendary covers in yeah. cover so many different ways, so many different vocalists. And you're just sitting back going like the idea of just a song becoming such so ingrained in like rock culture is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it is. They've, they've had several of those too, yeah. man. So good. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so fucking cool, man. And yeah. the one thing that I, I also wanted to ask you too, man, it's just a little bit of like throwback history because, you know, we, we all, you know, grew up heavily on like, you know, that 80s rock sound and all that stuff. And I'm just kind of curious, what was your take and like, what do you remember um, from back in the 80s, like with Firehouse starting out and when the big hit, you know, when the bubble popped for all these bands getting signed all over the strip and all that what do you remember about that time? Man, well, we, we came in a little late on that, man. We were like three years too late for that bit bubble. You know, that's the only thing that I'm sorry about. If we'd have come out two or three years earlier, it would have really been huge, I think, you know. But because uh, we didn't get the first record didn't come out till 1990. Right. And uh, I think if we could have been out in like 87 or 88 at least it would have been it would have been great but we never went to la or any of that i mean we did go to la to do a demo but we never went there and played we never got into that big scene there we had all the label we had five or six labels fly to charlotte to see us you know at different times so we, we didn't get to experience that la scene uh, and I think that's, I'm kind of glad we did. And it kind of made us a little bit different, I think, than a lot of these other bands that were out. So, um, but it was such a cool time. And uh, we were, uh, 
had, we all got together in Charlotte. We got a band house and we just sat there and wrote songs and recorded them every day. We didn't do anything else, man. We didn't go out unless there was a band coming through town we wanted to see. We'd go see that, but that was it, man. We buckled down and worked hard, and uh, and uh, it was so much fun. We had a great time there. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And then just kind of like a final part uh, on that question, like um, especially when you talk to a lot of artists now about like that time, whether it be the late 80s or the early 90s, and you talk about things like record labels, it's a little bit more taboo nowadays and stuff like that. You know, what what was your take on on just being signed? And, and did you feel that the, the record label did right by you guys for like what you were trying to put out, especially being a later band of that scene? Yeah, I mean, we, we were on Epic, uh, Sony Epic label, and uh, they treated us good. I mean, I you know, it was, uh, thank God, the, I mean, the first single they put out was Shaking Tumble. Like most people thought it was Don't Treat Me Bad, but Shaking Tumble came out, and it mo mostly was just released to college radio stations. But it blew up, and... and so that gave them the sense. So if that happened for that, let's try it, keep keep it going. I mean, if that hadn't happened, I don't know, no matter what happened there, you know. Um, they, uh, but they did treat us well, and they stuck with us through uh, what was wrong there for until '96, I think. Yeah. So you know, they kept trying to push it. I think we were like the last hair band to have a top 40 hit. Like in '95, <laughs> so <laughs> it was uh, it was good. I you know I had we had a great A, a and R guy. We had uh, it was all all fun for us, but you know we thought we were on top of the world. You get signed to Epic Records, man. You know we were we were happy. <laughs> Absolutely, brother, a hundred percent. Hey, Psycho Steve, the less you have, the more you get. Let's speak on it, bro. Okay. Uh, if you didn't join Firehouse and you didn't join Striper, what would be the band that you had to be in? <laughs> of all time? Just any band. If you had a choice. Judas Priest. Nice. Yes. Yeah. A choice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, could you imagine being on stage every night with those guys? Good God. That's the thing. Rob Halpert is the man. I have to say, he's my favorite singer it's ever been. Nice. Love him. And such a good guy. God. Yeah. Such a cool guy. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. Psycho, you want to, why don't you keep it rolling, bro? All right. Um, All right. So on your downtime, because of COVID and everything, so did you rehearse and record the album up in Mike's studio or where did you guys record this last album? Yeah, we were up in uh, uh, what's the name of that town? Right south south of uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Long Meadow. Yeah, Long Meadow. Uh, okay. Danny and Paul got the studio there, dude. Spirit House. That's freaking amazing. I mean, he bought this this house, I think, was built in the 1800s, and it had a, a horse stable behind it, and they turned that, and it's a huge building, they turned it into a studio back there, so we got to stay in the house at night, just live in the house at night, and walk down to the studio every day, and do your thing, but it was such a good vibe there, and those two guys are absolutely sweethearts, man, I love them both to death, and they made it fun, and Made it sound great, so, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Boss, boss man Jason. This album. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, the album's going to be so great, man. <laughs> Jason, take it away, brother. So, Perry, I want to circle back around to uh, an alternate universe. <laughs> so, uh, <All> right. <laughs> let's say that uh, you never... Um, for lack of a better term, made it uh, into music um, as a career. And uh, okay. what what do you think you'd be doing today? Is there any trade that you knew or like um, 
different type of uh, industry maybe or um, Wow. I never thought of that. Uh, well, I, um, before I went on the road, I graduated from University of South Carolina with a business management degree. I got a BS in business management. That's why I got started late. I promised my mom I'd graduate from college first. <laughs> and, uh, but I was never really interested in business that much. I'd like to, I think I'd like to have been a, maybe a, either a yacht or an airplane salesman. <laughs> there might be a lot of commission on that. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I've never even thought about it. I, I, I mean, I'm sure I would have gotten into music somehow in some aspect of the business, maybe. Because, I, but I've never thought about it. I've always been so focused on making it in a band. I mean, I refused to quit. Everybody else I knew, other than CJ, quit. And I was like, I did, I, there's so many other people that were so much more talented than me. Just they couldn't handle the road or they didn't want to be away from the home or family and all this stuff. And Man, I had blinders on. That's all I wanted, and uh, stuck with it. And that's, you know, that's why I didn't have to work in an office. I guess it's been good. <laughs> nice, right on. Nine of the are so overrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, retirement's better. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I'll probably have to work till I'm seventy-five. But you know, it's all right. Yeah, but, but what a for a 401k? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Might have to talk to Michael about that. It's like, come on, Michael, what's up with that perks package, bro? Uh, no, no doubt. I'll have to, I'll have to hit him up for some. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, it's all you, brother. Uh, um, I have a question that goes way back. Um, why did Firehouse do two versions of Don't Treat Me Bad? It was, you, you, you guys kind of did two different videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The first video we did in Richmond, Virginia. That's so Michael and Bill were from Richmond. And uh, we did it in a club there. And for some reason, Epic wanted to spend, you know, another $300,000 on, they wanted to, video with the woman in it and all that stuff so that was her call we had no say so in that we were like we want to do another video they didn't like the first one so i thought i liked the first one better <laughs> yeah so this cycle steve true oh. yeah yeah did he actually catch the guitar like on the first try? We <laughs> wanted to save the guitar. <laughs> we <or did>. <laughs> yeah, we actually dropped it out of that window. Yeah, he caught it. He caught it the first time. That was just a one take thing. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah, you only got one take. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like the Dukes of Hazard. Like, how many General Lees did they go through? How many guitars? <laughs> oh, I wish I had one of those General Lees. <laughs> I thought a few might have been broken, but <laughs> I'm a because I think that's who uh, Bill was sponsored at the time was Yamaha. I think. Uh -huh, Yamaha. Yeah. yeah, but they did it in slow motion when he caught the guitar, like they put it in complete. Yeah, we had. I think there was a little camera mounted on the guitar. Yeah. We threw it out of there. It was pretty, pretty cool. That was high tech back in those days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Any questions from the, our lovely crew? Uh, oh, yes, uh, they do. Um, Mickey Twist, uh, how was it coming into Striper with Timmy being a finger player and you a pick player? Was yeah. his bass runs easy to play? No, no, they weren't easy to play. <laughs> it's like try copy Steve Harris with a pick, and it's not an easy thing to do. But uh, and I didn't, I didn't know if they would be uh, open to that or not. You know, when I got there, I was like, uh, when I played country, I played with my fingers, but that's more slow stuff, and 
it's not that hard, but that real fast stuff. I, I never l- learned to play with my fingers in the past. I always played with a pick, so it was hard to get that tight. And I wanted it to be like picking right with a kick, man. And I do that so much better with a pick. But uh, first time we played, like the first song of Soldiers I ever played with them. And uh, they were like, they looked at each other and smiling. You know, and they're like, did you like it? It's like, I'm playing with it. I have to play with a pick because I, you know, I can't play with my fingers that well. They were like, man, that sounds so much better. <laughs> it's like it's so much tighter and on, you know, right, right there. Just what they wanted. It's like, yeah, that's fine, dude. If you play everything like that, that's freaking awesome. So, so they loved it. So I'm happy that they like that, you know. Oh, and we got Brian with a few more people. With a few more questions, um, at this time, without being able to play any large shows, is Striper as a whole working on new material, and are you working on any solo projects? No, no solo projects. Okay. Nah. Uh, we're, uh, we just got through recording two live shows in the studio. We recorded the album, and we went up... Uh, what was it a couple of weeks ago? Well, I just got back a couple of weeks ago. We were there for 20 days and we shot the two videos and the photo shoot and all that, but we did two pay per view or on demand things that we're going to release later. And one of them was the entire new record. So we went in and set up our amps and drums and recorded it and played everything live. <laughs> so, and we didn't know these songs that well, right? I mean, we never played them on the road. Right. So we played in the studio. So we went to Michael's house and rehearsed for about a week and got him good enough. I think we played, we played him pretty good. And then we went back and did, uh, the hell of the devil album, the entire album. So those are going to come out as two different, uh, two different paper. You think since we can't go out and play live. And, uh, if those go over, well, we might keep doing something like that until we can get back on the road. Nice. Uh, and just yet, yeah, two more questions. Um, one is, what is your biggest fear? And the second is, as a fan, what is the best rock show you ever attended? Biggest fear? Uh, <laughs> get bit by a rattlesnake <laughs> or eaten by an alligator. I don't know, man. We live. <laughs> no, I, I don't like snakes, right? I live on, on a right above the, uh, to a golf course, which is, has a wildlife sanctuary in it, right? So when I bought this lot where I built my house, I went out there the first day and I saw this little sign sticking up right across from my house on the golf course. It's like, what is that? And I walked over and it said, beware of alligators and rattlesnakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in my backyard. I'm like, oh great, what have I done? But as far as my favorite concert, man, it would have to be 1981. First time I saw Judas Priest, Iron Maiden opened for him. Damn! <laughs> oh my God! Paul, Paul is still singing for him, man. I was gonna say Paul Diano. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the Diano lineup. Yeah, yeah. That was that was so amazing. I was on the front row, dude. I was my chest was against the front. I was standing right in front of Glenn Tipton, right. And I don't think I closed my mouth the whole night. I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, I was in I was in heaven. I mean, God, that was I think that was, that's got to be my best one. Who was better that night? Priest, I mean, I, you know, I was such a big fan of Priest. They could have sucked, and I would still thought they. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't suck at all. It was so good. Uh, <laughs> this has been like a cheerleading section for Judas Priest tonight, hadn't it? I'm sorry about that. No, not, cool. not at all, brother. <laughs> We're all fans. Yeah. Yeah, Angel, you can keep rolling with it, buddy. If we still got fans. Um. No, there's no more questions now from the fans, so we can kick it back up to you. 
Yeah, no worries, dude. Did you have a question for yourself, dude, or I can take it away? Oh, yes, I do have a question. Um, are there still any places that you still want to tour that you haven't had a chance to to go to yet? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, there's uh, so many places in Europe I hadn't been. I mean, I've only been Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, and Norway. I'd love to... Uh, cover Europe. I just love it. Love the people there. Uh, I think it'd be cool to play like China or Russia, man. You know, back in the day, a lot of big concerts were in Russia and uh, that would be, that would be so cool, I think. But uh, other than that, no, nothing. No, I can't think of anything else. Dude, that bright yellow shining off the snow of Russia, man, that'd be cool. <laughs> it would <laughs> hell yeah man for sure so perry when you guys were recording the new album and then of course 2020 became 2020 did were you guys basically did the album come out on time like the album coming out this week is it was it released on time or did yeah. things change because covid kind of knocked all the screws out no it, it, we were we were already finished recording when it really got bad so we looked up there. Uh, we finished recording, uh, like right when we finished, we went on the Monsters of Rock Cruise happened. So we went on that. And then we had a few shows in Texas and then four shows in Mexico. When we got back from Mexico, it was bad. Gotcha. Right? And uh, so, so we had everything in the can as far as recording. The only thing that I hadn't finished recording it was Michael's lead vocal and the lead guitar tracks. So they did those at home and just blew them into the studio. So everything was on time and worked out great as far as that goes. Yeah. Right on. Since the since everything wasn't a hundred percent complete, just out of curiosity, in those shows that you were able to do, did you guys play anything new for those shows? No. Nope. Gotcha. No, we didn't. We didn't know them well enough to play them. <laughs> no, that's cool. Fair <laughs> enough. Because you know, some you know, sometimes bands are just super duper eager to to jump into uh to new material and you know hey it's it's rock and roll dude so a couple strings get missed here and there you know hey no harm no foul i was just yeah. kind of curious if you guys were like super hyped to get into that material for those shows well uh we're super hyped now yeah you know it's like we want people to hear this and we want to push this record because even michael thinks it's like the best thing he's that we've done that the band's done before and we want people to hear it live you know not just a record because you get a lot of you know sometimes things click better live than you do on a record but you know that's one thing yeah. Leonard Skinner was always better live to me than they were on the album yeah uh, and we push for that we try to be better a live band and you can be on, on a record to try to you know, just have more energy but uh, we're itching to get out there and play, man. That's all I've ever done. And this is the longest I've ever gone without playing. And it just feels strange. For so, sure. you know, we're ready to go, man. As soon as we can, I don't know when that's going to happen. There's no, we don't, we haven't heard anything about, I think the first show we have booked right now is in like seven months from now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if things change, you know, start booking stuff, but I don't know what's going to happen right now. Gotcha, man. Perry, you personally, are you the kind of player, the kind of musician that's like super excited when you get to play new music? Or are you just kind of cool to play whatever, if it's old, so be it? Or do you get excited about new stuff? I get excited about new stuff. Oh, yeah. Because you can get a little bored with playing the same song every night. If You know, I hadn't got not. It's not that way with Striper yet. I mean, Firehouse, after 10 years of playing Love of a Lifetime, you're like, oh, God, you, know, you don't want to play it again. So you want to do something new. And uh, But even the old stuff to me is still kind of new <laughs> with Striper, you know. But yeah. um, but the new this is going to be different for me. I mean, because I was involved in putting some of this together and, and recording it. So it's going to be like a whole new thing, I think. 
Absolutely, man, for sure. Psycho Steve, beard it up, brother. Mm. All right. Let me think. All right, so besides your current band and your former bandmates, who are your rock star friends? Like, you could, if COVID didn't happen, you could pick up the phone and call Ian Hill and say, hey, Ian, let's go have a beer. Is there anyone like that? Boy, I mean, I don't know. Not really. I mean, you don't get to hang out. I mean, I'm, I'm in South Carolina, man. There ain't no rock stars down here. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I was good friends when I was in Nashville. I mean, I'd go over to Gunnar Nelson. We, uh, I actually was going to play with him right before a striker thing. We got together and... Uh, He's got a new project coming out. Yeah, the Nelson Boys. So uh, they were good friends of mine. Mark Slaughter was there. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, guys in Cinderella, I never knew those guys that well. So I mean, I didn't get to, I hung out with them a few times, but um, there wasn't that many, not many people that I could just call up that I'm friends with, you know. Blas from Slaughter was a great news friend, but. We don't speak that often. No. Gotcha. Yeah, no, for sure. Grizzly, you're up. So um, I, uh, you mentioned that your next show isn't scheduled for like seven months. Is it? Um, have have any of you ever considered um, possibly doing like a like a live stream, pr uh, concert type of thing where. Uh, people would be able to still um, experience a live, um, not a live setting, but a, a live performance. Um, and, and it'll also help uh, you guys play, uh, continue to play and, uh, and not get rusty now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm almost too late, dude. It's too late. <laughs> Well, that's kind of the thing we were going for for these uh, on-demand shows we did that we recorded. They're totally live. We didn't, like, I mean, I didn't play it exactly right, but we, like, we took, if, if we totally screwed up, we'd stop, start over, but um, they're pretty much live, you know. Um, as far as doing the live, live stream thing, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to do that. And if we could figure out how to do it, <laughs> well, we all got to get together. That's the scary part, right? Because we're scattered all over the United States. But uh, I'm not really into flying right now. I, when I went to Boston, I drove. I didn't even fly. So I was like, I'd rather drive 15 hours than fly too. <laughs> all right, um, so we have to call Michael about that too, guys. So remember... Harry needs a 401k and, and a plane. Streaming thing. We got you. Harry. Vacation days. <laughs> Vacation days. Oh, yeah. We have to write yeah. that down. No reptiles okay. on tour. I'm, I'm writing no. it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angel, while you're writing that down, brother, why don't you jump in for us? Okay. We got Kevin White. He wants to know what are your favorite covers to perform? Boy, you did do some covers on the last. We tour. did. What? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Crazy Train was cool. Uh, heading out to the highway, we did that. I got to meet your priest, I guess. Um, <laughs> we did. Uh, did it kiss? Heaven and Heaven and Hell was really good. Yeah, we did a kiss song, huh? <laughs> I've never been a big Kiss fan, but you know, I can understand all people crazy about them. But I, I, I was in a little heavier stuff, so I didn't really ever get into Kiss. But yeah, we did the. I forgot what we did. Shout it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun though. It was a cool little bass part in there. Yeah, well, well, Striper did a really well-received covers album probably like six or seven years ago now, and it it really it really was a cool. They did it very well. 
It was good. Yeah. And uh, if he's thinking about maybe doing another one of those. So oh. we'll see if that happens or not. Yeah. Nice. Not to, not to call it like, you know, Perry after midnight where half of it's priest covers. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, keep it going, buddy. Okay. We got um, Brian. Um, he wants to know if you were able to see one band live that you never had a chance to see, who would it be? Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Never got to see him. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Star Peters wants to know would there be a vinyl available as well as the CD for the new album? Yes. You can get it in several colors, too. <laughs> I think it's yellow, of course. Blue, and, red. I think, yeah, you can get there's There's vinyl. You can order vinyl, pre order vinyl on it, too. Yeah. And uh, Jackie wants to know who came up with the yellow and black colors. That was Robert way back in the day. Yeah. And, I think that's right. I think it was Robert. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And my question is on the album, you have 11 songs. Were those all the songs that you guys did for the record? Or is there any any other songs that are leftovers? Nope. That was it. We just worked on those 11, put all of our energy into that. And it was good. Yeah. And on the tour, on, on the last tour that you did, um, Whose idea was it to do All She Wrote? Because it really sounded great live. It got a really that was, that was what had nothing to do with me. Man. That was all. <laughs> that was Michael wanting to do that. And uh, so he said, he just said, I want to do a fire song. You just pick one. And uh, I always loved it. was one of my favorites. That was an actual single so that people knew. So that's, why, that's how that came about. And uh, Kevin White wants to know, um, how is Oz doing? He's good, man. He's, uh, you know, um, he's got a, he's, I think he's going to see another specialist here in a little bit. And he's staying on top of it. And we're just playing it day by day. We're not sure what's going to happen. Um, but he's trying to, you know, get different doctors to look at it and see what they think getting all these different uh hospitals and things and getting their opinion on it and we'll just see how it goes you know but he's feeling good you know amen absolutely for sure <clears throat> yeah i don't want to take it back up to jay because it's the top of the hour where we got to thank yeah. some of our sponsors <laughs> Absolutely. No problem. Yeah, we always take a second to, to thank the, the peeps that want to be involved with us, you know, so we always appreciate Bradley Entertainment for being on board and backing us. You know, we thank Levy uh, Lewis from Levy Metal Enterprises, custom guitars, stage equipment, Aces and Eights skateboards, and Twisted Vines horror decor. I was actually talking with Saren from uh, Twisted Vines today, and she's doing great. So thank you guys so much. We heart you so much. Um, but anybody who wants to be involved with us, we are happy to talk to you guys. You know, don't be shy. Dial us in. Call Jason. Call Steve. Call it. Call Angel. Hit up the Metal Summit. We can all access and message you back and stuff like that. So if you want to get involved with the Metal Summit, we're happy to get involved with you. Just let us know. If, uh, if we don't know about it, then we can't help you and you can't help us. So make it a family affair. Um, so, again, we appreciate every um, buddy when it comes to that. Uh, Perry, I just kind of want to have a little bit of fun, man. And you're allowed to say yourself, dude, who's got the best hair in Striper? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to go with me. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely agree. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't believe I still got it. But it's still there, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now you're just now, now you're just continuing giving Steve his uh his Halloween costume, man. Or just <laughs> or just shame. Oh God. Steve's <laughs> hair's never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> sure has a lot on his face though. I mean that grows great down there. Yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> like <laughs> he wants to dress up you know, he's he's getting ready to dress up as Santa Claus. <laughs> oh god 
Steve, Harry, buddy. Steve, if you can get like one side in particular to really rock it out, try that'd be the best comb over ever. <laughs> Tease one side of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, after this interview, we need to all get on Steve. He can put some striper stripes like into that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like some yellow there. stripes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do it. Oh. Oh. No, that's awesome. Steve, I'm, I'm after putting you on the spot, I'll let you have some fun, dude. Take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to piggyback off of that hair question. Who <laughs> takes longer to get ready, you or your wife? I think we're about the same, man. She's okay. pretty quick. I don't take any time at all, man. I'm like really fast. But she's pretty good for a girl, you know. It can sometimes take a while, but she's pretty fast, and she's always on time. Nice. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Another question on top of that. Um, I asked Michael when uh, Jason and I interviewed him. Now, um, you sitting in the shower? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't sing much unless I'm on stage. My oh, wife's okay. always trying to get me to sing for him. I'm like, eh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> I'd rather wait to look at paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, uh, man. So <laughs> Jason, it's all you, brother, man. So uh, Perry, what um, what is your uh, pre-performance ritual that you go through to prepare yourself mentally and physically for uh, your performance, or do you have one? I don't have one. Uh, no, I don't have one. I uh, I don't warm up. <laughs> I don't, I don't warm up my voice. I don't warm up playing. I just walk out there and do it. I drink, drink a cup of coffee. I guess that's the only thing I do before I go on. I, no, I never had one. Never. I don't. You know, can't make anything up now. I don't know. So <laughs> nothing cool I can think of. <laughs> right on, man, for sure. Angel, how about yourself, there, my dude? He, uh, outsider Dave wants to know who is or was your biggest influence to to play bass. Yeah, my dad. I said earlier I would be. I, my dad. He would be my influence. He got me started. He had a bass, so that's why I started playing that. Nice. And uh, Brian wants to know what the Striper as a band do in their touring off time. Boy. Well, two of the guys go to Vegas. Michael's in up near in Plymouth, Mass. And I'm in South Carolina, so we don't see each other unless we're on the road or in the studio. So uh, I don't know what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I know Oz. Uh, Oz is a a, a, food, a a foodie man. He just loves going out there. So it sucks about this COVID thing. He would be, he'd send pictures like every day of his food to us, right? <laughs> he'd be at a different restaurant, two or three different restaurants a week, man. Uh, Robert's a, I think, uh, I don't know, I think he's pretty much a homebody. He likes hanging out with his chihuahuas and his family. And uh, Michael's just too busy with everything he's got going on between the solo stuff and Striper, Sweet and Lynch, and all this stuff, you know, it's like he doesn't have time to breathe. I think he's getting ready to, <laughs> to uh, sing on another album for somebody coming up this week. He's got to start working on that. So he stays busy in the studio all the time. Cool. And we got Star Peter. She wants to know who in the band have you have you bonded with that you have the most in common with? <sighs> I, uh, man, I, uh, probably Michael, maybe, I mean, we're all great friends and we all hang out together, but 
it seems like we're a little more on the wavelength together. Um, but uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough question, man. It's been no particular person was like, that's my buddy and I've hit it off and I'm only hanging with him. It's not like that. It's like kind of more like a family thing, you know? Yeah. Same thing here at the Metal Summit. We're all yeah. like family. Yeah. I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite one to hang out with. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I love you all guys oh. the same. So. <laughs> oh. I'm, let's not get all teary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here's just my question. Do you have any any funny stories from the road from any tour? We can keep the name of the tour anonymous. <laughs> any funny stories on, mm. on being on the road? Wow. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> well, this wasn't <laughs> funny, but it's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, that too. It, it um, could be weird. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me. So this guitar player is in the band that we're opening for. And I'm not going to say his name now because I don't want to promote him. Because I don't like this dude. But I, this has come up in an interview before if you want to research it. But I was walking by and having a guitar. I'm walking down the stage down the hallway going to the stage and I hit him on the shoulders like what's up man and he grabbed me and put me in a headlock and pulled a nine millimeter pistol out of his waistband and cocked it and put it in my temple what and told me to don't ever touch me again God. right so I was like it's okay to put a gun to somebody's head but don't freaking cock it right I mean that could go off <laughs> yeah. so that's the weirdest thing I think has ever happened to me on, on the road. That's, that's, that's amazing that you described that just as weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of terrifying. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it kind of was. Now I had to go play, right? You know, one minute after that happened. Phew. So I had a lot of adrenaline going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sp well, speaking of adrenaline, though, I mean, Perry, man, Rock and roll and motorcycles kind of go hand in hand, and you were uh, putting one up there on social media. So, what is it about motorcycles that got you, bro? Oh man, I've ridden. First bike I bought was in 19. First street bike I bought was a 75. Yeah, it's a Kawasaki 500 triple, fastest production bike in the world at the time. Yeah, it's freaking great. So I've been hooked, dude. Ever since then, I've had. Kawasaki's, Harley's, Ducati's, Triumphs. I now got a Honda. I mean, I love all bikes. And uh, this thing is a, it's a 71 seat uh, Honda. It's so cool. <laughs> so cool. Such a throwback, man. It's got a great look. But uh, yeah, that, the, the guy I got it from is a great, is a huge striker fan. And, built the bike and there's a great story i don't know if you guys got to read the story that i posted that he wrote yeah just if that doesn't make you cry you're not human i mean it's so touching and and uh he pretty much gave me the bike dude it was so cheap and uh he just wanted it to be in the striper family and uh just uh it was a, it's an honor to have it from him he's a great guy john flack is a super dude man he did a great job building the bike too. Yeah, absolutely. Did you do you ever did you ever get into like you know like bike trading with your peers or anything like that? No, I, no, not really. I uh, I was one of the few people that I knew that even had ever had bikes. No, none of my friends really had anything, and um, I actually got started. I was uh, racing motocross when I was like fourteen or fifteen, and. Uh, Never was any good at it, but that got me been able to handle a bike pretty good. So I've been lucky to never, you know, knock on wood, never had a bad spill on one. So uh, it's uh, just a great feeling to be on a bike, man. Absolutely, uh, man. Yeah. 100%, dude. Psycho Steve, the man. Okay. So out of all the fans, 
what is the weirdest thing that you've ever had to sign? I can't say on air. Oh. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> on this show, you can. <laughs> the weirdest, let's see, uh, trying to think of something, not a body part, right? It's been a lot of weird one things that I've got that, but uh, a guy one time brought a, a tobacco stick for me to sign. That was kind of weird. <laughs> I know. It, well, you have to. I, I grew up on a tobacco farm. I had to work like tobacco back in those days. You had these sticks that were like, you know, four feet long and you have to string the tobacco on the stick to hang in the barn. He brought, a, I guess he real, found out I used to, was raised on a tobacco farm. He brought a old tobacco stick for me to sign. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh. That's crazy. I thought that's what you said, but then you kind of cut for a second. So I was like, did you say tobacco stick? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a new one for a lot of people, I'm sure. <laughs> Steve, we can we can still rock with you, buddy, unless you want to kick it to Jason. Um, I have one more question. What was your first tattoo? Uh, firehouse tattoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was in 1990, 91. We were on the the uh, Warrant Trickster tour. Yep. Blood, sweat, and beers. Blood, sweat, and beers tour. Yeah, and we, uh, we took our, uh, we promised everybody in the band, we took, we said, hey, if we ever sell a million records, we're all going to get a tattoo because we never in a million years thought we'd sell a <laughs> million records, right? So it, it went it went platinum while we were on that tour. And so we had this guy, John Rainey and Charlotte came on the road. He stayed on the road with us for like a month, man. We had a good time. And he's tattooing us and we were getting tattooed, man. He did some of this when we were on the bus going down the road on the bus. Did everybody get a tattoo? Yep. Did everybody live up to the wow? Everybody in Firehouse got the same kind of little sparky or as our mascot little fireman guy. So nice. Is is uh, I just got a new sleeve done the other day. Did you see that? Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was actually awesome. gonna ask you about that, but Steve yeah, got, beat me look, to the tattoo question. I got seven 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 on there now. So yeah. Um, I have two questions about that. One, was it painful? Number two, how long did it take? Uh, yeah, it's painful. People say it's not painful and crazy, but uh, Agreed. this this arm was all freehand, and it took. I think 45 hours. Wow. Wow. He so slow. And he drew it. He didn't trace it or anything. It was all <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, that took a long time. That was, this was probably 10 hours. Jeez. Hours. Yeah. Not all at once, but, you know. For sure. Oh. But is your uh, is your time with Firehouse one of the inspirations for what appears to be a lot of fire flame type tattoos for you, man? That's coming from the hot like hot rod stuff, man. I love yeah. the old hot rod flames and yeah, man. You know that was something I kind of kept in mind too because I because I knew you know you're a bikes cars guy, so I was like, well, I was like. I'm I'm curious because it's it it's either going to be this or that or completely coincidental and it's coincidental which I think it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure, man. That's fucking awesome, Angel. I'm going to kick it down to you right quick, dude, because you took you got you got such you had such a reaction to that tour when he mentioned it, dude. So I wanted to kick it down to you for that. <laughs> uh, we got um, Kevin White. Do you have any specific collections? Collections of right. anything? Yep, of, of anything. Well, I was a big book collector, uh, horror books. I had uh, everything Stephen King ever wrote, and most of it signed first editions. Man, this was very expensive. It was my retirement, right? 
Well, I moved to Nashville about a couple of years after I've been in Nashville. My house burned down and all those books got trashed, right? So that was the only time I've ever collected anything. I don't have, uh, I'm not really a collector other than, than, than that. I hadn't started my book collection back again. So, you know. Stephen, if you're watching, what books do you need? Yes, all of them. <laughs> okay. There you go. Get on it, Mr. King. Yeah. There you go. The Metal, the Metal Summit sponsored by Stephen King. How fucking rad would that be? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Uh, Angel, I got, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot, dude. Did you get, you got to see that tour, right? Um, uh, my brother was too much of a punk to take me to see that tour, so I'll oh. never forgive him for it. Oh man! But I saw it on the, on pay per view because you guys had like a pay per view event in yeah, in New yeah. Orleans to actually That's do it. Right. I remember uh, that. That's right. They took us to hot hot sauce factory. So, so how was it like shooting um, on the um, pay per view thing? Was it like a lot of pressure because you know that show was actually being shot for it to be to be shown on on pay per view? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit of pressure there. I mean, you don't want to mess up too bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and we were pretty young. That was our first tour, you know. Uh, so we were like nervous being in front of people anyway just and then to throw that on top of it you know we were probably shaking in our boots that night but uh, it turned out great though sounded good i sang on pitch didn't <laughs> miss any notes so it's pretty good you guys you guys set the bar for what you're doing in striper now dude with your pay-per-view shows man that's right yeah these are these are a lot more laid back. This, these were in the studio and we're, you know, we're not going crazy. We're kind of trying to, and we're thinking about what we're playing too. It's like, we don't know the songs that well. It's like when you're playing the old stuff, it's kind of second nature. You don't think about it. But when you got to think about what you're doing, you're not going to be going nuts like you would live, but you know, but I, I think they turned out really cool too. I had, I hadn't seen the visual of it yet, but it sounded really good. So nice, man. That's super duper rad. When uh, when you uh, when you had that um, early success in the platinum records with Firehouse, and you got your uh, your record in the mail, like how to talk a little bit about that? I mean, I always find that stuff to be pretty cool. About like, because you got some musicians that are like, I was so hype right then, but and then I've I've talked with other musicians that are like. It was it was cool and I was so stoked, but man, when that thing showed up in the mail and I was like holding it, what was your what was your your reaction? When I got it, I was like I couldn't wait to open it. I opened it and like it didn't have an album on it. It had a little CD. I was like, <laughs> dang it! Oh, that's weak. <laughs> that's it had so a CD weak. and a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> a little gold cassette and a CD. I'm like, man, but we were the we were the first band on Epic Records not to for them not to print an LP. I'm like, what timing is that? You know, it's like our timing has always sucked. <laughs> so our gold or platinum record didn't have a didn't have a uh, album on it. But it was still cool to get it, you know. Oh my god! Uh, oh god! They weak, epic. You you yeah. owe them. You owe them, man. <laughs> yes, especially now. Like serious. Yeah. Like I, I figured that should just be a standard, you know. Yeah, we we get that. We get that. You know, CDs are, you know, that vinyls, you know back and doing that kind of thing but cds are still kind of like the way i guess and you can't frame a digital download so i say they owe that shit to you <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny now you just get it and it'd be like ones and zeros <laughs> it's oh, like a, a platinum barcode <laughs> <laughs> angel oh my uh, god angel are I we mean... still here with the fans bud 
Uh, Brian wants to know, uh, what's your, do you have a favorite horror movie? Oh, God. Uh, if you have a couple, that's fine. Mm. Boy, I, I, maybe for, I think for King, maybe the first time I saw Pet Cemetery was really cool. That was a great book, man. I love that book. Uh, favorite horror movie. That's hard. God, I was really into Hellraisers when it came out. The first Hellraiser movie was awesome. Trying to think. I'm hard. It's hard for me, man, to come up with. No. Like, when you ask for a favorite something song, don't ask me to pick a favorite song. Somebody <laughs> did that the other day. I was like, huh, no idea. It's hard enough to pick a favorite band. So that's your favorite song. And uh, so it's tough for me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. J Jason, how about yourself there, bro? You've been quiet for a minute. All right. Uh, <laughs> two questions. One is, uh, what's your favorite bass line? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> oh, God, you're such a dick. <laughs> Roundabout. Jason, Roundabout. Are you paying attention? <laughs> No, but at the uh, same time, Jason, that's pretty damn amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Still love it. But uh, really, Perry, though, um, uh, if, if you could give any advice to any up-and-coming um, musician, musician who's uh, starting out, uh, what would it be? Boy, I guess not to quit. That's, I mean, as I said earlier, that's the only reason I'm here. I refuse to quit. My God, I don't know. These days, it's got to be tough, man, because it's night and day from when I came up, when we got signed back in the day. God, I don't know how you do it these days. It's just it's so different. You know, I don't know what to say, but practice a lot. Be great at your craft, man, you know, and try to broaden it. Do it a little better than I did or broaden your horizons musically. Because I was kind of blinders on. I love this, and that's all I'd listen to. Um, get into different genres of music and learn to play different stuff, and it, it will make you a better player. You know. Absolutely, man, for sure. Psycho Steve, you're up, my man. Okay. Uh, the question is for the rider: When you guys go back on the road, is there anything that has to be on the rider for you specifically, or you won't play? I wouldn't go that far. I won't play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in Van Halen or anything. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh, oh, I immediately at, started. Uh, Atkins bars have to be on there. What is it? Atkin, Atkins bars. Atkins okay. candy bars. I love them. I've been on a, like a low-carb diet. So. <laughs> cool. That's the only thing I ask for. Nice. Yeah. Is there anything on the rider from some of the other guys that you just think is weird? Uh, yeah. There's like every time there's like when you, you know, they break the food out or whatever it is, all the stuff gets on the table. There's always like five packs of chewing gum and five to ten things of breath mints every night. I was like, how can you possibly go through that many freaking breath mints? <laughs> and I never see any of them touch. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's like, why is this on here? I don't know. But you know, that's the weirdest <laughs> that's the weirdest thing on there. It's stripers it's equivalent it's to brown M and M's. <laughs> yeah. Is it, for the or is it for one particular member that asks for it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know where it came from. I hadn't asked, whose <laughs> is this? <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I just think it's hilarious that they just sit there and <laughs> it's like... Everybody, one pack might get open, maybe, if that. You know, how are you going to go through 10 packs of... Oh, the funniest thing, uh, talking about breath mints. When I got, when I joined the band, they sent me a copy of the writer 
you know, like if there's anything you'd like to add to it or anything you want, put it on here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going through it and there was like five packs of gum, five packs of certs. <laughs> certs. <laughs> I said, certs? It's like, when's the last time you've seen a pack of certs, right? I was like, what year is this rider from? When I called him, I was like, what year is this rider from? Like, this is our current rider, and you put certs on there. <laughs> they don't like certs anymore. They're like, oh, you know, Berkman's. So from then on, I give them a hard time every every time we go on stage. I grab a pack of those, whatever they are. Hey, you want certs? <laughs> <laughs> I nice. forgot the word fragments. Oh God! <laughs> do do you have a do you have a drink of choice, Perry? If you drink at all? No, I don't drink. I quit. I have to. Uh, yeah, I drink a lot of water and coffee. That's all I drink now. Right on. Nice. Yeah. There, there's your rider, coffee. Coffee. Oh, I love coffee. Just regular old coffee. None of this fancy. Mm. Right. Cold stuff, nice hot. Well, here, so base, so jumping off of that, coffee is definitely one of those like entrepreneurial things that a lot of bands are getting into. Whether it's coffee or anything else, have you thought about doing a venture like that? Hmm, that's a good idea. Yeah, no, I hadn't thought about that. Well, now I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> It would be the strongest coffee you've ever tasted. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> Perry Richardson, 777. You thought 666 had bang? <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Michael, <laughs> another thing. Get on it. Coffee. <laughs> Stripe for coffee. You know, they, you had, they, they actually had Stripe for coffee. I it saw, I, yeah, I saw a bag of it when I first got in the band, but uh, huh. I never saw it since. But yeah, I don't know. That must have been an old thing. That was the prototype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Angel, how we doing, my man? Oh, we're doing awesome. Um, Brian wants to know: Will Perry make a guest appearance with with Green Jello? What? Who's will that? You make uh, that's from Brian. Uh, Brian, clarify that, dude. Bri I, I know Brian. He's a, a photographer for the band Green Jello. I don't know if he's got a crossed wire or something. Are you familiar with that band, Perry? They did a, a popular song called The Three Little Pigs. Oh, oh, oh. oh. They're this hey. really wacky, yeah. punky. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I remember that video. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll do it with anybody, man. Let's do it. Oh, um, so I don't know hardly any songs except Striper. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> uh, Outsider Dave wants to know how did you get into Rosk bass guitars? Sorry if I mispronounced it. The Roscoe? Yep, Roscoe bass guitars. Yeah, they, they were the. Uh, I was like one of the first guys they ever endorsed back in, in 89 when Firehouse first started. And. Uh, they were in Greenville, they're in Greenville, North Carolina, and uh, he built me the two that were in those first videos we did. And uh, they were great bases. And but we got offered to sing from Yamaha. The, the whole entire band was gonna be endorsed by Yamaha. So Yamaha drums, guitars, bass, keyboards, and all that. So I had to let it go and he got in touch with me. A little bit before I started playing with Stripers, when I was still playing the country gig, and asked me if I wanted to come back, I was interested in playing Roscoe's again. I was like, <laughs> they're like one of the, I mean, they're huge in the jazz, the jazz market. A lot of jazz guys play them, but now they're broken into the country market, and a lot of the big country guys are playing them. And so, as soon as I got a Striper gig, I called them up. It's like, man, if you're willing to paint them yellow and black i'd love to come back to you and you welcome me back and it's been great yeah nice 
Um, my my question is on the last album, you guys were able to actually make a music video. Um, I know now with things being the way they are, um, will Striper make a music video for for the latest song, Make Love yes. Again? Yeah, I think it's coming out the fourth also. Oh, cool. Yes, yeah, so we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we did the video for that while we were in while we were shooting the uh, pay-per-view thing. So it's ready to go and it, it looks really good. So Awesome. So they'll be coming out this Friday? I think so. I think the video is coming out with St. Tom the record the album does. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 hold me to that, but I think that's the No, case. we won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's rock and roll, things happen. But I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> I know that's definitely cool. With like the pay per view thing, uh, Perry, have uh, you had mentioned it before? Like you know, seeing how it goes, and if it does really well, um, you know, maybe continuing on with something like that. Has there been any talk in the Striper camp since it is a pay per view kind of recorded thing about maybe you guys doing like a DVD release or even like a two disc set since you did you know the new record and you did To Hell with the Devil? Yeah, I think that might be happening a little later on. Cool. Yeah, they might. I heard talk about it. Maybe release that audio. So oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, nice. it would be good. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Psycho Steve. So on your downtime, what are your hobbies besides now? You have that new bike and you have the new dog. So that takes what do you up like a lot to of do? Time. I play a little bit yeah. of golf. Uh, Believe it or not, I like to play golf. Um, I like tinkering in the garage, building stuff. None of it works, but you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I try to. I stay busy around the house. Shelly has a long list of stuff for me to do about every day, so I don't have much time to do any hobbies. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Nice. How did how how was everything uh, when you had to deal with like uh, the COVID and everything? Oh, I kn- Angel called it. Said, "Yep, yeah. I called it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, get- <laughs> One of my cats is named Motley, and literally oh. has to make an appearance for any like you know '80s '90s like hair band. Always has <laughs> to get one. Yeah, time. and I called it when we had the meeting. I was like, yeah. "Motley is making an appearance." <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> with uh, with uh, COVID and everything, like how how was like what did you do when you were at home, and was it like stressful and stuff, or was it kind of nice to to be mm-hmm. home for a while, even though it was kind of against your will? Yeah, it was not. It was nice, man. I mean, uh, when I'm home, we don't go out a lot anyway, um, so it wasn't a big, you know, it ain't like we're going out partying every night, you know. It's like. Uh, I'll go out and see bands that are playing and buddies and get together, go out to dinner and stuff like that. We haven't done that. Um, yeah, we've been hunkering down, not going anywhere except to the grocery store and maybe Lowe's. But, uh, um, but it hadn't been bad. You know, the Shelly and the, you need to get to spend a lot of time with her is great and the dogs, so uh, freaking love it. So, you know, it's all good. Dude, that's all also so cool to hear that you, you know, go out and see live music yourself and like support it and stuff like that. Do you get do you get uh, recognized a lot when you go out or are you able to enjoy the show pretty much? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. That's not bad. I mean, I'm like, well, it's my hometown, man. I'm like, people sick of seeing me around. <laughs> you know, it ain't a big deal here, you know. Um it was a little weirder in Nashville. I think I called out a little more in Nashville than I do here, but um, yeah, it's like people know me and they just say hi and move on. But but I never mind it, dude. I love people to come up and say hi to me. I don't, you know, don't anybody ever feel, feel weird about that because I'm just, I don't look at myself as being a rock star, right? I'm just a guy that plays music. I've never had that attitude. Uh, 
maybe I have a self-esteem problem. I don't know, <laughs> but I've never seen myself as that big a deal. I don't, you know, if you want to come say hi, please do. You know. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. No, I mean, you've you've always come off as just such a, a down to earth guy. You know, you're friendly with the fans, you know, and you love to like yuck it up. I mean, this has just been just fun in general because we've we've yeah. gone off in a hell of a lot of different directions during this. Thing. <laughs> this has been awesome. But, yeah. But Perry, if you're cool with it, man, we're just going to kind of spin it around the table one more time if you're down. Sure. Cool, cool. Psycho Steve, you want to start us off? Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You said tinkering, as far as in, what are you making? <laughs> like trying to build things out of wood, that kind of thing. Carpentry, boy, I suck at it. I really do. But it's fun. I like, I like the challenge of trying to build something, right? My dad was great at it. He built houses and everything. I can't. I didn't get any of that. It's like hard. <laughs> <laughs> so if anything kind of is hard for me to do, it challenges me like golf. That's why I like golf so much because it's so hard. God, it's a freaking hard game, man. And I hate for something to whip me like that. So I keep at it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, Dude, that's super rad. Jason, anything from you, my man? Speaking of golf, did you start playing because it's in your backyard? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, no. Uh, I mean, Myrtle Beach is a golf mecca, man. There's, a, I think, 110 courses here now, something like that. But the uh, first time I ever played golf was in Firehouse, and Bill played all the time. And there was a course in Charlotte that – the only reason I ever started playing was nobody had any money, right? It's like after two o'clock at this one course in Charlotte, they would let us come play for four dollars, <laughs> right? So I was like, yeah, four bucks. I don't eat today. I can play golf. So that's why I started. And I started playing with Bill there, and uh, it was yeah, become a little hobby. You know? Absolutely, for sure. Angel, how's the uh, yellow and black attack doing? Are the metal summoners still doing well? They kicking? Well, we, yes, they are. We definitely have uh, a comment from I, from Outsider Dave, and I will follow that up with a comment and a question of my own. Um, he, um, Outsider Dave wants to say, thank you for what you do. You inspired me to play bass again after 27 years. Wow. Love that you are in Strifer, both of, both of our favorite bands. Awesome. That's so and cool. And me, I don't really, I rarely do this, but I'm a big, like I said, fan as well. Just want to say thank you for coming on. I definitely owe Cycle Steve a beer now for getting <laughs> on the show because I grew up watching, like I said, the videos, not forgiving my brother for not see, taking me to see Firehouse because he's a punk about it. Yeah. Just want to say, man, I love your music and just want to say thank you. Oh, man. That's so cool. Huh? That means a lot. Thank you. Oh, yeah. so, so now my question. Um, your very your very first striper show. Uh, what was that like? Being that it was your first your um, first show with the band. It was the Big first effort. time I've been nervous on stage in a long time. I mean, I never get nervous anymore. I've been doing this for what almost forty years now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was pretty scared <laughs> that night. <laughs> um, but. Uh, it was a great experience and it went over great. You know, the fans loved it. And, and uh, you know, that, that one stick in my mind. I, 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 what amazed me is I remembered everything. <laughs> so I was like <laughs> scared I was going to screw up either playing or singing something. But yeah, I did pretty good. So and it was a, it was a, a memorable evening, to say the least. That's awesome. <laughs> Totally, totally killer. M3 was the first show with Striper, right? It was M3? Yeah. First show in the States. I did one show and we did a show in Italy for Frontiers Records. That was yeah. the first thing I did. And then we came straight from there to M3. Wow. Yeah. 
that's a, that's a that's a heck of a, a show to pretty much kick it off with, man. And th- those fans are nuts, man. Yeah, like, they are. Yeah, very, you, you, you think know. you're gonna screw up? You don't want to do it in front of thousands. You got to be hungry. <laughs> I mean, you were talking about the Striper fans, you know, being being a family and being very loyal, and definitely nobody can deny that. Um, but it's it's very much like that with the M3, you know, the M3 lunatics. They are very, very ingrained in that festival. They've not yeah. been they have not been stoked about the delay, the postponement, and then the uh, schedule. I was hoping that was gonna happen too, man. We were psyched to be there again. Yeah, yeah. man. Hopefully no. soon. Yeah. Ab- absolutely for sure. And I as well, Perry, just want to say like thank you, man. I mean your the your work with Firehouse is phenomenal. I loved it, especially that first album. I mean, you guys set the bar so high, and you really just killed it. Especially you know, especially on your on your first record and stuff like that. But just everything that you've done, man, it's it's been great, man. There's seriously just not been a clunker in the bunch, but it's been super awesome to 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 look forward to getting you to uh, for a Striper record that you have your stamp just like right on, man. Oh, it's good. It, 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 yeah, it, I think it brought a, it's a different feel. It's a, it's a different groove. And, you know, it, it, I don't think, um, you know, it's not that it's better. It's different. And it's, it, it, it took it to a little different space, you know, and, and they loved it. And that's what I was like, you know, thank God. It was a the first interview Michael did that I, I was listening to online after after we did the record. It's like, man, I gotta give Perry the MVP this year for recording this record. He did the freaking knockout job. I was like, oh my God. Oh. So, uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's living a, a, living my dream, brother, you know? Absolutely, man, for sure. And, you know, we, we support you and we're here for you, man. You're an alumnus now, man. Yeah, so, you know. Thank you, guys, dude. This has been really cool. I'm glad you're doing this kind of thing. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, have it back anytime. Yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Oh. Absolutely, we look forward to it, and we thank the fans. We thank you guys every yes. single week, man. Thank you so much. You guys are always got kick-ass questions. Thank you so much for you know supporting our show, but supporting Perry and supporting the guests of the show, you know, hitting them with such great questions and being involved and stuff, you know, you know, I always love to say like any, any of you fans, anytime you feel like there's a place that you don't belong, then this place is for you, man, because we love all of you guys so much. Thank you for everything you do. And again, thank you so much again for tuning into an episode of the metal summit, Perry Richardson, first and foremost, man, we thank you, man, again, for taking time out of your evening. To yes. Spend thank us. you. No problem. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thank you, uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching the Metal Summit. we got a guest announcement coming up for you guys. We'll see you next week on Wednesday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern time for the Metal Summit. For Jason, for Psycho Steve, for Angel, again, for Perry Richardson, I'm Jay, and we thank you guys all so much for tuning into the Metal Summit. We'll see you next week. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>